Okay, this is going to be about the uh, mechanical Nando build. This particular one has a little remote. Uh, the original name, Little Robot Telecommando, would mean the robot remote control. So I wanted to make the small 3D printed one remote control also. And have the same features. So it walks with turning head. Here's the remote. Actually, we're printing some parts for another one right now. Um, the whole process starts on the computer. I use Design and Spark Mechanical to uh, lay out all of my parts, design them, and the first thing I, I built was a, I guess we'll call it an ornament. I'm going to use it as a Christmas tree ornament. I did put this up on Thingiverse, so anybody that wants to make their own can, super lightweight, but just a physical representation, that's something I could work from. And then I went in and redid the drawings hollow for mechanical for holding the motors and stuff and printed the parts on the Persa and these are basically the parts involved and using a very small all metal gear motor um, Solar Botics up in Canada sells them, they're about 20 bucks a piece very powerful, very small but basically I solder two wires onto it and it, then it'll slide right down to this spot in the body sitting straight up and down like this inside the robot and this little double cam pressure fits right onto the the motor itself the, uh, the legs, these actually are up inside the body this one that has the extra notch. This notch is for moving a, a lever that makes the head turn. This would be the, the one that's up on top. This one would ride on the cam just below it. These would go down in the feet. So basically if you were looking at the robot like this, this is where that leg would be inside there. You get the rough idea. So you have a front part of the leg, then you have your, your back part of the leg. And then the feet themselves, you have, well, you have these ratchet wheels that have rubber grommets on them. Here's one without, without the grommet. And the long and the short of how this ratchet system works is the wheel itself, this little cog wheel, can move back and forth in these little slots. So when the foot is moving forward, the wheel will naturally gravitate back so the little um, where is it the little edges on the wheel won't get caught on a fixed cam on the front but when this moves backwards that would make the wheel want to go towards the front which would mean it then would get stuck on the ratchet there's a similar system on the rear wheel and this uh, is kind of a common system for a lot of robots because it's so basic. They don't have to make separate ratchets and all sorts of stuff. It's just the wheel migrating in that slot. But the problem with it is on robots that have a very small foot swing is almost all of that foot swing is used just to migrate the wheel forward and backward and, and so you get very poor walking out of it. I made some adjustments to the system in that I actually added a uh, uh, a tunnel inside the foot and put a BB in there and the BB is free floating and what this does is help push the foot forward but it also helps bind things up because just like if this gets caught on the on this lip to lock up the wheel if the lip gets caught on the BB that'll help lock it up but if the wheel is rotating this way like when the robot's going forward the BB would just lift and go up out of the way and if it hits this it just pushes it back and clicks out of the way. So it just added one more layer of ratchet without adding any complexity to the assembly. And for example, I'll run this thing on its side. 
You see, you don't have a whole lot of foot swing, so you don't want to waste any of that migrating the wheel, any more of that than necessary. You want to use as much of that as possible for the actual walking. And of course with the two cams, basically what they're doing is, is moving these. The upper cam, is, as you can see, is offset from the lower cam. So when one leg goes forward, the other leg goes back. And then as far as the head assembly goes, you've got the top of the body, you've got this um, neck post, which would actually uh, go like that. And the head would go onto that square like that. Then on the inside of the robot, you'd have this little lever, which fits right onto the, the square, gets glued in. That little pin goes, uh, where's the foot with it? There we are that little pin resides in this slot here so as this is moving back and forth that moves that pin lever back and forth and then the, makes the head turn as far as the remote controls go these are just uh, small uh, AAA battery boxes that already had switches on them this one I just used uh, some uh, dollar store toy wire which I'm a little afraid of it. It's very flimsy. So on this one, I'm, I'm thinking about using this heavier uh, servo grade wire like a normal RC servo would have. There you have it.